peace, honor, love, and respect. Um, we're on chapter 13, and it's entitled, Helping Yourself to Stop Smoking, Cure Emphysema, and All Ill Effects of Smoking with Astro Power. And, ooh, I need this one. Okay. Again, I would like to use myself as proof that my system works. I smoked for more years than I can remember. I smoked cigars, cigarettes, and pipes. I almost was a chain smoker. But one day, six years ago, I decided to quit cold turkey. Outside of a cough, I noticed no ill effects except that smoking greatly reduced my sense of smell and taste. That's deep because I don't think the youth know that. I loved to smoke. However, I quit being um I quit because smoking is a messy habit. I was always burning holes in my clothes, furniture, and rugs, and there were always ashtrays that needed cleaning. Even with my reduced sense of smell, stale smoke smelled terrible. By my system, you quit cold, just stop smoking, period. You can do you do not substitute anything for smoking. You do not follow any of the hundreds of so-called ways to stop smoking. My astral helpers must receive full credit for his success. What worked for me will work equally well for you. I have no intention of getting into any arguments as to whether or not smoking is harmful. I have known of heavy smokers who died of lung cancer. I have also known of persons who never smoked a day in their lives also die of lung cancer. Doctors present us with a long list of detrimental effects of smoking, from yellow fingers to cancer to heart failure. I know of a medical doctor who tells his patients to quit smoking. He himself is a chain smoker. <laughs> anyway, I will not argue the point. However, if you have what it is you, to you a good reason for kicking the habit, then my system will do the job for you. It makes no difference why you wish to discontinue the habit or how long you have smoked. My wife tried several systems without success. My wife is a f further proof that my system works. She tried several of so-called plans for kicking the habit. Over a period of 10 or more years, none of them worked. I kept telling her to quit cold turkey like I did. She finally put my method to work. My father in spirit was her astral helper. He made it possible for her to quit cold turkey. It has been over two years now since she smoked her last cigarette. She has no desire to smoke and did not gain weight. She has stopped spending money for cough syrup. She smoked for over 30 years. Ted thought up his own system. It didn't work. I have discovered some smokers who developed their own plans for discontinuing smoking. Ted is a case on point. He started out his day with no with one cigarette in his coat pocket. When the urge to smoke would hit him, he told himself that he had only one cigarette, so he had better save it until later. He generally ended up smoking the one and bumming from others to get through the day. His system did not work. My system does. I'm on page 169. What do you do when physical conditions can be traced to smoking? Sam had already smoked six, um, stopped smoking when he came to me. He was his doctor who provided, it was his doctor who provided the motive for not smoking, said his doctor. Stop smoking or die from emphysema. He decided that he wanted to live, so he stopped smoking. However, he still had a bad case of emphysema. The same is true for hundreds of smokers who have kicked the habit. They stopped too late for medical science to do anything for them. It is never too late for your magic formula unless you are actually at death's door. Helen had a strong but too rapid heart. Her doctor did not believe that smoking would kill her, but it would shorten her life. She attended classes using scare tactics, motion pictures that showed the terrible conditions of your body caused by smoking. She religiously followed the instructions, put out her several well-known plans, which none of them worked. Her heart kept on beating too quickly. Today, there is a new Helen. She did not even gain weight by my system. Her heart had slowed down to normal. 
and she can smell and taste again. Even her frequent nosebleeds have stopped. Women do not find it more difficult to stop smoking than men under my system. I have read that women find it more difficult to stop smoking than men. And it's not so with my system. Paul and Pauline, as a husband-wife team, both decided to stop smoking. Paul kicked the habit by quitting cold turkey. Pauline tried to quit cold turkey, but was back smoking after two weeks. Now both are off now both are off the weed for good. Paul went along with my system to keep his wife company and make sure he was off for good. It also made it possible for both to discuss their progress, and they are the factors necessary in my system. Number one, quit cold turkey. Number two, get help from one of your ancestral helpers. And number three, do not substitute food, candy, or anything else for smoking. Never permit any physical matter to control you. Dean Martin is a slave to a third inch roll of tobacco. He cannot get through one song without smoking a cigarette. There are millions who are slaves to tobacco. It is ridiculous for anyone to let anything physically control them. The material things around us are fulfilling our needs and our desires not to be pushing us around. The alcoholic is a slave to alcohol. The drug user, a slave to drugs. These people have no control of themselves. It is equally ridiculous to let people push you around. Many people are just as much slaves as if anyone had bought them at a slave market. Perhaps the most undesirable type of slavery today is to become a slave to money. Many millionaires let money push them around. I have already called your attention to the man who read a book on how to get rich. He was rich and miserable until he applied my magic formula. There's nothing wrong with smoking, drinking, gambling, or making money as long as you stay in the driver's seat. You must be in control of the physical and never let the physical control you. Let a moral of the parade of life come into your mind. Picture your life from the very beginning. I mean, from your first incarnation, hundreds or perhaps thousands of years ago. Picture the beginning at the source of a river, gradually increasing in size as you live each life, increasing in strength and as you move to the sea or oneness with God. The sea is made up of many other rivers of individual lives which form the sea of life. Picture yourself becoming more and more aware of your place in the great stream of life and flowing into it. I hope that I've succeeded in telling you that your life and all individual lives are aiming at something. I now know that the ultimate goal of the creator, but it is inspiring thought to feel that each of us is an expression of life and of the great intention. If you view life in this matter, you cannot help acquiring a sense of responsibility and a desire to make yourself culturally valuable. As you let this moral unfold in your mind, your total life seems similar to a rely race in which you are given the opportunity of carrying on and adding to the contributions of past generations. You will become aware that the race of life is becoming accelerated and your past lives and your past lives of all humans have given much that you may carry on. As you come to the end of this morale that you are picturing in your mind, ask yourself these questions. What am I doing with my own personal life? Have I allowed runners from past generations to cross the finish line while I watch indifferently? Am I leaving achievements to others? Am I a slave to one or more physical things resulting in my getting nowhere? Have I all the things that bring prosperity but still do not have the happiness and the fulfillment? the feeling of fulfillment? Or am I getting the supreme thrills that comes with counting myself on all that is important in the total universe? 
Does your goals release astral power? Recently, a patient of mine stated that the girl I love is too good for me. I have no future. I think that I will marry a girl who demands nothing, who will not expect me to be a success. I said, I suppose you will stay home and vegetate while your wife is out earning a living. This young man has taken his place in the groove of failure. He's too lazy to even watch the miracles of mental action images become reality. He will not act aggressively and fearlessly when it comes time to move towards the type of goals that will free him from the birth slavery to the physical death rebirth cycle. My formula will give you a balanced physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual life that makes not only for health, wealth, and happiness, but movement towards a oneness with God. My astral helpers agree that a balanced life goal is needed. When I first started teaching um, psychology in college, I told my students that to understand themselves, they needed to trace every aspect of life back to early childhood. I now know that that is the only a small part of the truth. You need to trace every aspect of your life back through all of your incarnations to your very first trip to the earth plane. Your balanced life goals must take into consideration everything that has happened to you for hundreds or even thousands of years. Astral ancestor helpers Howard Townsley, who's a doctor, he reported that Dr. Townsley was a family doctor while he lived in Ohio. And he was killed in an automobile accident in California. He was now again our family doctor. He's the one who made it possible for me to continue living on the earthly plane. I have already told you that I was scheduled to pass to spirit on February the 20th, 1972. I remember how surprised we were to hear the news of his death. We had heard part of the story but did not know about the auto accident or why he was even in California. Part of Dr. Townsley's success and failure story cannot be told. He was a very successful general physician with many patients who developed a great love and respect for him. He regularly took his turn as head of the Anospathic Hospital in this Ohio city. He not only was a fine physician, but a good business manager. However, he and his wife did not get along well. I do not know all the details, but I feel sure that Dr. Townsley was not the primary cause of the trouble. Dr. Townsley made the biggest mistake of his life when he decided to just disappear from his hometown, his wife and family and friends and associates. He now knows that he should have divorced his wife rather than walk out of the whole life situation. To this day, he does not know why he decided to give up all that he had and worked so hard to get. No one in this Ohio town knows what happened to Dr. Townsley and may never know. There were rumors that he went to Mexico, but no trace of him has ever been found. They did not know that he is now on the spirit side of life. If disappearing from the earth plane without a trace can be called a success, then he was successful. A doctor friend of Dr. Townsley prepared false documents that made it possible for Dr. Townsley to identify by himself with a California hospital, Dr. Townley will not tell me the name that he used. When Dr. Townsley was killed, his doctor friend did not dare reveal the truth and send the body back to Ohio or he would have been in deep trouble. So he took care of the burial and closed the door on his friend's practice of medicine in California. Doc, that's going to break, isn't it? I'm going to have to put a knot in it. Dr. Townsley now sees his big mistake. He tells me that he is very sorry that he did not use a better method of handling his family affairs. If I had a balanced life goal and the traits necessary to move towards that goal, I would never have done what I did. I had everything anyone could ask for, all the money I needed and the respect of a medical associate and patients. Why did I just leave? I just felt that I had to get away from it all. Dr. Townsley told me this and much, much more about the terrible mistake that he made. I do not suppose that anyone knows how many people try to solve their problems by just disappearing. Do they really solve anything? Dr. Mednit and his wife has confidence enough in me to let me handle their medical problems. I did not believe that I needed a psychologist. I thought I could handle my own problems. How wrong was I? 
You who read this book are lucky. You will not make the mistake that I have. Hundreds and hundreds of others like me have made. Dr. Townsley concluded that discussions of this disappearing act. One more question, doctor. Should I inform your wife where you are, I asked. He said, please don't, was his simple reply. Well, anyway, we're glad that Dr. Townsley reappeared and is with us to help in any way he can. Astro Helpers Inger Steven reports. Inger tells me that if my book had been available to her, she would still be on the earth plane. I had everything anyone could want. I have $50,000 in the bank, was scheduled to start a new TV series, and had many true friends. Why did I do it? Why did I decide that I did not want to go on living anymore? Why did I keep my marriage a secret? Inger talks reluctantly about her life on the earth plane. I asked her why she married a melanated man. She told me that she thought that color made no difference. That you, when you're in love, it's just love. However, she was not ready to face the world with her marriage or she would not have kept this secret. Why? Because it was stressful back then, sure. Inger can ask many questions, but she still did not have all the answers to her questions. She is happy to be a member of our Astro Helpers team and fully expects to receive as much help as she gives. I sincerely hope that by now you fully realize that through my book, you can help not only yourself, but you can also help many on the spirit side of life. They need our help also. That's why we... um give food on the altar and pour libations and you know affirmations and different things like that later in this chapter i will tell you about Ender's very valuable contribution astro helper norma jean baker and marilyn monroe reports i have been in contact with norma jean for some time she is as beautiful now as she was on the earthly plane she is with me right now and i write these lines she throws a, a little dots of silver and gold lights on the paper to let me know that she is here. I have seen her in gorgeous colors several times. I can feel her presence. She's also very close to my wife. There were good friends 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem. Norma Jean wants the world to know the true story of her passing to spirit. She returned the last time she learned a few lessons from being an Ill illegitimate child. She tells me that the various accounts of her early life are reasonably accurate. She did intend, indeed learn many valuable lessons. Now, Norma Jean was not murdered, nor did she commit suicide. She will tell you exactly what happened. I was very depressed all day Saturday, August the 4th. These feelings had gotten worse ever since I realized, ever since I realized from my past, my last picture. Dr. Greenson spent several hours with me Saturday, but it really did not help. I really need my good friend Ralph Roberts, but since Mr. Miss Murray was planted in my home by Dr. Greenson, I did not see him very often. His massage treatments could help me that fatal night. Massages do be on point. If you're not getting massages, try to get one. They really do help with healing your body and removing blockages and diseases and stuff like that. Stagnant energy. Massages are really amazing. But if she said that she, if she could have reached him, she'd feel like she would have been alive now. It is little wonder that Mrs. Murray took an extended trip to Europe. She must have felt very guilty. I'm not really ready for Dr. Green's plan of getting rid of my discrepancies upon others. I did not eat very much that last day. The informal dinner attended by Peter, Pat, Bobby, and Mrs. Murray was not a happy occasion because I threw a blanket of despair over them. I asked Bobby to stay with me, but he refused. Eventually, the party moved to Peter's beach house. Naturally, Miss Murray did not go. And maybe she should have went to that. And then also, too, especially with melanated people, a lot of times it's an issue with depression, not only because of what's going on in the world. And our melanin and our antennas pick up that energy, but also it's a lack of sunlight. So if you're not getting enough sunlight, that could also contribute to depression. And also vitamin B12 will also help with um, a positive dis demeanor and disposition. And it'll also help convert your food to energy. And it also makes you feel better if you're dealing with depression. 
When the party got underway, Bob called and wanted me to change my mind. Others have joined the party and it became a free willing event. Bobby asked me to join such a party only greatly increased my feelings of depression. I thought that he had more respect for me. Jack always treated me with great respect. Then why does she assume there was something going on again internally? So vitamin B12 and sunlight. I never did like these Hollywood parties and was refusing to take part in them with great frequency. And see, I've never been to one, so maybe, you know, she just would have been overwhelmed and she knew it. I love to be loved, but I never considered these actions love. My depressed feelings of after Bobby called were really getting me down. I went to the bathroom and got rid of what little food I had eaten. I then started taking the pills that Dr. Illenberg had prescribed the day before. Then I took off my clothes and laid nude on the bed. My mind was a whirl. My whole life seemed to come into my mind for me to view. It surely was not a pretty picture. Yet there was a Joe whom I really did love and still do. He was my greatest love and the only one worth mentioning. As my life passed in review, I kept taking the pills. I then realized that I needed help. I called Ralph, but I couldn't reach him. It seemed that I could not keep my hands off that bottle of pills. So then she was being manipulated by spirit. Soon they were all gone and I was slipping away quickly. I made one more effort to reach someone on the phone, but it was too late. My astral records indicate that I passed over at 11.35 p.m. I had also discovered that a higher spiritual force decided that my life on earth should be terminated. The future would have created only more problems. After all, my mission on earth has been completed. You can call it suicide, you can call it an accident. It makes little difference in the spirit world how you label it. I had completed my mission on earth and there was no point in my staying any longer. Over the hundreds of years, I had advanced to a really high level of consciousness. This record was now in jeopardy. Now that you know the truth, may God bless you. Norma Jean had told me many times that she wished that she had known while on the earthly plane that she was sure that I could have helped her. It is apparent that her psychologist did not. Norma Jean is now a very valuable member of our ancestral ancestral helpers. Um, she's really a part of the team. She has promised to stay with us for as long as we need her help. Now, astral helpers learnt Lena Moon reports. Lena, my mother's wife, was the first contact that I made with persons on the spirit side of life. She had been trying to get through us for years. She brought and nearly all of the persons from the astral world that I had contacted. She has even brought in some famous persons as Edgar Casey and Bishop Pike. Lena is a free soul on the fifth level of consciousness. She has been extremely valuable to us and is surely one of the most important members of our ancestral astral helpers group. I am certain that you have realized how important I consider your book. Even on the earthly plane, I must have realized the importance of a balanced life goal. For I've read and reread my creed many, many times. Lena told me, the my creed poem came to me one day many years ago. When I was in a very disturbed emotional state, I have no idea where it came from, but I do know that my wife was not surprised to find a copy of my creed in her mother's Bible after she passed the spirit. So here it is. My creed. I seek no honor where I go. That I through service have not won, nor plead that any good shall flow into my life if I to none have given joy. None questions but the voice within. Judge and accuser is my soul. My mind is that stern discipline that ever seeks to help me loyal. I must be true. My savior, the deeds that I have done. For these alone my faith is grown. My crown that love I have won. And deep within is God enthroned in all his glory. Astro Helper Santio reports, no group of Astro Helpers is complete without at least one from the Far East. Norma Jean brought Santios to our group. She was the wife of a Japanese banker and passed to spirit about two years ago. Every one of our group deeply appreciates the fine contributions that Santio and Trika, a Japanese exorcist, have made. Santio is a very wonderful person to have around. I believe that many copies of your book will be sold in Japan. It might be well to translate it into several languages. 
Each and every one of the members of Mother Bacon's constellations of astral helpers knows that you have pictured the truth more correctly than many writers have done. I'm very proud to be associated with this fine movement to get people to really understand and live fuller lives while on this earthly plane. It pleases me greatly that at least we in the spirit are not considered dead or ghosts, but that we can continue to live and contribute to a better life for our earthly friends. Astral Helpers um, Virginia Jagger reports, as reported earlier in this book, I found Virginia in an astral rest home. She passed to spirit as a result of a mastiff, a mastiff cerebral hemorrhage at the age of 50. She's a very beautiful redheaded Virginian who was married to the same man three times. She divorced him twice before. She now knows that she should have never married him even once. It was all a big mistake. If I had known Dr. McNitt, I still would be on earth plane. A better balanced life goal would have resulted in a very different approach to my physical life. I also now know that I have made far better times on earth than the last one. I surely messed this one up. Astral Helpers Hazel Shepard reports, Hazel was a well-known member in the Middletown, Ohio. Many business executives contacted her regularly. Her predictions were extremely accurate. Now that Hazel is on the spirit side of life, she's helping me in the business world. My wife will soon be writing her book and it's called Peaceful Missions. Many persons tried to contact me through some rather famous mediums after I passed over. I never responded to any of those calls. I come in the first time Dr. Metnick tried to contact me because I like what he is doing. I now came in regularly every evening when our gang gets together. Astro Helpers White Cloud Reports. Every group of Astro Helpers should include an American Indian. Of course, an indigenous Aboriginal. White Cloud is a medicine man. Dr. Townsley says that he is a very fine doctor. White Cloud will come in when we call him. You have a good doctor. You don't need me. White Cloud tells us, you call, I come running, he adds. White Cloud has also given me treatment several times. I felt better instantly. Real quick, we used to all stay together in like, it was like 13 of us staying in a two bedroom apartment. That's where I met Dr. Aline. And I remember a brother named Yabu, his daddy came. And he was like, what in the world is these niggas doing with all of these chiefs around them? You know, all these Native American indigenous people, he could not figure it out. And I remember after his father left, Yabu was telling us, no, that wasn't Yabu. It was Cubby. It was a dude named Cubby. So, anyway, Cubby told us, and then Aileen was like, that's because we are the indigenous aboriginals, okay? The free and sundry moors. Okay, I'm on page 178. All of our astral helpers believe in my magic formula. Our astral helpers are just as important to us as the ones I have just mentioned. There's a Mamie as wonderful blonde beauty. Hilda, an English gal with salty tongue. Phyllis, whose mother, Bacon, describes as having a healing touch. Albert, a former medium. Ruth, a willing helper. Kathleen, my father, who has given us priceless help. Jackie and Mary Jo, whom I had written about in other chapters. We love them all, but the greatest of all is Mother Bacon. Get busy and get your own group of astral helpers. They are priceless. That's deep. So if you notice, his astral helpers was his father, his mother. You see what I'm saying? So yours could be your ancestors too. Find out who your astral helpers are by asking. And they'll reveal themselves. If you're sincere, you'll give yourself at least 10 minutes a day for meditation. And then you'll also read page 29. And while we're at the 29th minute, let's read it. Now remember, you want to picture images as well as words. Continuing now and for days and years to come, I am moving to, I repeat after me, I am moving towards my cherished goals. My life is becoming rich with happiness, a better economic condition and full contentment. Every action, enterprise, or endeavor 
in which I wish to be involved is bringing increasing rewards. Life is making its joys and happiness easier to come by. Good fortune is coming my way more and more frequently. I'm learning how to share my good fortune by helping others along the way. I am truly moving closer to a oneness with God and Goddess and a full release of my inner self. <laughs> okay, well-known surgeon tells how to stop smoking. Dr. Arthur Weaver, who's a Detroit surgeon, states that he probably saves more lives in his smoking clinic than in the operating room. I like his advice concerning how to stop smoking or I would not quote him in this book. Dr. Weaver states that the only way to successfully stop smoking is to quit cold turkey. You have to choose to stop smoking and you have to mean it to the core of your soul. It doesn't make any difference how miserable you will feel if you have chosen to stop smoking and you mean it. There is nothing in the world that can stop you from being a non-smoker, insisted Dr. Weaver. Dr. Weaver suggested you eat plenty of fruit and drink lots of water. If you crave a cigarette, drink a glass of water and say to yourself, bye-bye craving for weed, bye-bye craving for nicotine. Drink that water and say bye-bye craving for heroin, bye-bye craving for crack. Drink that water and say bye-bye. There are other parts of Dr. Weaver's program that I do not agree with. However, I do agree that you can quit cold turkey. The one big difference between Dr. Weaver's program and mine is that my magic formula, you also need astral helpers to get you off the weed. I wonder if Dr. Matt Nick was smoking weed too. He said pipes and he said cigars. Doris kicks the habit. Doris is a secretary for a human engineering firm in Chicago that I write reports for. I frequently talk to her over the phone. One day she mentioned that she had tried unsuccessfully many times to stop smoking. I offered to help her. She had not even read my book. I gave her instructions over the phone. I learned her one of my astral helpers who has been with Dr. Norris for several weeks now. It is evident that Dr. Norris is off cigarettes for good this time. Here's what Doris has to say. The last time I tried to stop smoking was eight years ago. I started back after three months of agony. My weight increased from 120 pounds to 31. That made me start to smoke again. I did not want to get fat. When I stopped this time, it did not seem to be so difficult. I felt that someone is helping me not to eat as well as not to smoke. During the day, it is most difficult of all not to smoke or eat because I'm sitting at a desk and not moving around. When I'm at home, I'm moving around and I don't even think about it. It becomes less difficult as the week goes by. I have not gained any weight. When I want a cigarette, it seems that someone is talking to me and telling me about the advantages of not smoking and encouraging me to stick it out. Four steps to stop smoking. During your meditation, build mental action images of yourself going through your day without it. Number two. Stop smoking cold turkey. Number three, substitute nothing for smoking. Number four, get an astral helper to stay with you and help you. This is very important. You must have an astral helper. All right. That was chapter 13, how to stop smoking. And then also, too, I figured since y'all saw this, that I would show y'all real quick how to put knot in it, how to put knots in it, because I do not want it to break. So I'm going to gently, oh, okay. I, this one's an easy one. All I have to do is like twist this one around this one. Because that is really about to break. But if it breaks, it doesn't matter because all of it is connected. I had already twisted it. When I did these goddess locks, I'm trying to show y'all. Okay see how thin it is look it's really really about to break wow but when i did the it just broke which it didn't matter because 
it already was connected. But when I did these goddess locks, I did them way too thin. I did them way too thin. And then also, um, the female who I did hers, so she showed me how to do them with using her head. But um, when I did hers, she told me that you don't supposed to put moisture in it. But with melanated people, you're supposed to put moisture in our hair. So for months, I didn't. And I'm just like, wait a minute. This is too dry. But um, I did them way too thin. But I get lots of compliments, so I'll keep it. But um, thank you so much for listening. Um, appreciate your feedback and your support. You know, it's all good. Um, just want to let y'all know about our September 23rd, 20, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th event. Um, it's a place where you come and be inspired. There's melanated people adding on, growing. It's in the country, so it's going to be serene and peaceful. You're also going to be eating some great healthy food. Um, we also grew a lot of fruits and vegetables. Well, we grew a lot of vegetables and a lot of fruits too that grew naturally in the um, forest so we'll also learn to sight recognize um, herbs and edible plants we feel like that's very important as society is showing the face of demonic energy which we always knew it was there um, but nonetheless is still going on around us are we going to be prepared or not so we'll be talking about um, survival techniques. We'll be also talking about going deeper than just your physical. Because, yeah, you're a physical being, but at night when your eyes are closed, you're still dreaming and able to see things. Now, if you're not remembering your dreams, lay back down and get that lesson. And for the past couple of days, especially when you share that you're dreaming, then it'll leave quicker. That's what I noticed. So I put my hair right back in that dang on bed and lay there and slow down my breath and catch that lesson. Because your dreams, I know with me, your dreams are going to tell you what's going to happen that day. And either you want to be still or, you know, like if something negative happens, you want to be still. And you also want to be strategic. Allow your ancestral helpers to inform you and let you know what's going on. And I want to know about y'all's experiences too. You know, let me give you one more experience that I have. Two days ago, I had a dream about somebody was putting sod, which is like pieces of grass down. And I thought it was me. And because our land in Kelly had a whole bunch of sand, it, it, it was like difficult. The next step was to grow the soil, but Alim ended up having his cavernoma, and then we ended up having that flood, and then we ended up, you know, moving to another space in order to build it. But that was my next step. I was like, look, we're gonna make this landscape off the chain. And everybody tell you, it was definitely inspiring. People was like, why y'all ain't taping that y'all doing this? It's gonna raise the bar, you know? And I was like, ah, uh -uh, so people can hate and stagnate? That ain't gonna happen. But then I realized, we inspiring people. People constantly um being inspired by our works, even though they don't give us um credit for it. But they know where they originated from. And most other people too that know us do too, because they tell us all the time. But anyway, we feel like we all in this together. So we be like, word up. You see what I'm saying? Either way, because can't nobody take our shine. It's going to come when it's supposed to come. And I always be telling Eileen, it's a form of protection. But at any rate, um, in my dream, the guy had a sod. And then also we had an accident at the house. And I'm like, how you have an accident at a house? So I was just like, okay. Just just like I told Eileen, wrote it down so my um, pineal gland can get stronger. Because that's your spiritual and your physical connection. Even though you sleep, you ain't seeing nothing. But you seeing all these vivid pictures and your eyes is closed. That's where the idea of TV came from. From that which was within that manifests out. Remember, as be as above, so below. As within, so without. But I ain't going to go into it too deeply. I want to know about y'all's dreams and what y'all seen manifest. Okay? All right. I did sort of cut that off. But I got to go play this lottery <laughs> because I was riding down. We were coming back from New York. Shout out to Nicholas. And shout out to my mom and dad. Because they sure help us navigate. 
but we was coming back to Virginia and I seen on this 18 wheeler, which was kind of like a metallic color and just like glistening in the, in the light of the, um, of the oncoming traffic and you know, the power lines and stuff like that. And I'm seeing these numbers showing up on the dang going 18 wheeler. I'm like, what? So I'm sitting there just looking at them and they are just really appearing and then changing up and appearing again and then changing up and appearing again. And I'm like, dang, I leaned told me to play 23 and then 16, 17 was up there. Y'all can play this too. Cause shoot $53 million. That's plenty to share. So let me remember it was 16, 17, but they wasn't in this order. 23, then six. 16, 17, 23, 6. It was two more. I wrote them down. But anyway, um, I'm finna go play them. Alright. Peace, y'all.